What's up everybody? I'm Konosaid and welcome to the third episode of the Chronocast, a PlayStation podcast. As always, I'm joined uh, for this episode uh, with Yemi the Furret, aka Yemi. What's up, Yemi? How are you, man? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. We have a great show for you uh, today, guys. Uh, we have a lot of news to cover. We, had, uh, we have also uh, Gamescom 2018 to cover. So uh, we'll try to jump into the news right now. But before that, uh, Yemi, have you played something special this weekend? <laughs> I played Strange Brigade. All right. That's cool. And you, you were uh, live streaming a weird game yeah, like uh, oh. yesterday. <laughs> I was live streaming Donut County yesterday. That was. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to talk about that? We'll talk about it later when we get to the the my section. All right, no problem, man. <laughs> um, th this weekend I played uh, Claire, uh, the extended cut. Uh, it's a it's a um, old game from uh, the Vita and the PS4. It's like an eight bit uh, horror game, a little bit like Lone Survivor. If you uh, already played this game. Uh, it was cool, a uh, cool little experience and uh, an easy platinum too, so this is what I played this weekend. I was on the road, so the Vita is perfect for the road. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that would be perfect to play. Yep, exactly, and easy, easy platinum too. Get out of here, man. <laughs> Alright, so let's jump uh, into the news right away. Uh, today, uh, so the, the podcast is recorded each and every Wednesday and uh, drop on uh, my YouTube channel on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So, uh, hot news, PlayStation Plus free games for September 2018. So, as always, we uh, get two uh, PS4 games, two PS3 games, and um, two Vita games. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them are cross by too. so this is a really cool month. Uh, for the PS4 owners, we got Destiny 2. Yeah, me? Destiny 2? <laughs> Destiny 2. And uh, God of War 3 Remastered, which is an awesome game. Probably um, it was on my top 10 PlayStation games of all time. Awesome game. True. We got also Another World, which I don't know much about. Mm -hmm. uh, Cube Director's Cut, that's for the PS3. Sparkle 2 and Foul Play. Uh, all of the games are compatible with PS4, which is a really cool month for um, the PS4 owners. What do you think about the lineup? I think... I like Foul Play. I played that before. And of course, God of War 3 is amazing. I am so surprised that Destiny 2 is a free game because I don't think the original Destiny was free uh, ever. No, nope, I don't think so. And uh, also, a uh, weird note like in the PlayStation blog is that uh, Destiny is free right now. So you can go download the game right now and you can play it like this weekend and don't have to wait. Like usually it's next Tuesday, but yeah. for Destiny only it's right now. So this is a really cool gesture by um, by uh, PlayStation. I think Destiny is dying. The online is probably dying. So <laughs> this is maybe a push, a last push for the game. Yeah, trust me. I played through the game three times, one with each character and it was a boring grind. And then everything came out with them throttling your xp gain uh when after you reach max level you just gain levels and get free quote unquote loot boxes they're called engrams and they were throttling people with, with the xp they were making it way too much to level up so that you wouldn't get as many free ones which would make a normal player probably buy one if they need better gear and i just thought that was such a shitty practice and i stopped playing the game a while ago uh but i got through it three times and uh, i don't know how i survived but <laughs> Yeah, that game, it. <laughs> that game it was a cash grab, I think. Uh, it's what, like it's, the ex exotic uh, weapon and stuff like that. Like people yeah. go crazy for that. Uh, the first one uh, got mixed review. The second one didn't get the the, the sales or anything that um, the developer wanted out of this game, especially the publisher in this case. Uh, yep, I never played it. Uh, not my type of game. I don't mind like grinding in a GRPG game, but grinding online... Uh, with other players and this is just not my type of game and especially uh, first person shooter so not my right. type of game I had the first destiny it came with my PlayStation 4 but never like it's it's still brand new and unopened so <laughs> yeah. and I don't want to like I don't want to put the game down entirely because there are some good components to it like the online multiplayer stuff is fun you do like these special public event quests that can be fun and going through the different places but it, this game destiny 2 really just felt like a dlc a large dlc for destiny 1 because there were no new enemies the guns were mostly the same just a little bit of a different 
way how you handle guns, like the special guns. Um, but really, I mean, it just was disappointing. It really was. And like I came off, I, I finished Destiny 1, and I was like, you know what? This game wasn't that great. But if there's a Destiny 2 and it improves everything, I'll I'll buy it. And yeah, I bought exactly. it. And I'm done with the Destiny franchise, to be honest with you. I, I'm not sure if there will be a third one, too. Um, I'm not sure about oh, that. We'll see. No we'll news, see how right? much they milk it. Yeah. Yeah. They just keep adding that DLC stuff in, though. Yeah, Which I exactly. guess it's, it's good that they're still supporting the game, but still, it's like, not going to bring me back. So Sorry, talk- Coco. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so talking about improvement, uh, PS4 firmware update 6.0 uh, will let you search PS4 by publisher genre. Um, that was a big, uh, that was something that was probably broken, at least for me, uh, like the search options in the PS store by letters, uh, Mm -hmm. was a little weird. Um, so they fixed this one, uh, bring a lot more filters into the PlayStation store. So I'm kind of glad that they did that, but I'm, to be honest, I'm never in the PlayStation Store directly into my PS4. I'm always in the the website version of the uh, PlayStation Store. So not a huge improvement for me. Well, this helps me. Usually if I'm searching for something specific, you know, you have to kind of type out everything. But if you go by publisher, by genre, it could be a lot faster. I think it's a good idea to add this stuff in. Um, and it definitely makes it a step above other search engines. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And this is uh, the 6.0 update. Is prob- This is probably the biggest uh, feature that will be included. There will be a lot of small, smaller stuff into that patch, but this is the big, like uh, the, the, the store front will be updated, uh, both visually and uh, the the features into the, the store too. So this mm-hmm. is kind of cool that they're still supporting, of course, the console. And uh, they, they acknowledge like the, the mistakes that they did and uh, they are willing to fix it. So props for that. And yeah, hopefully they have more than just this, you know. If, yeah, it's probably <laughs> if more. If it's just this, you know, a numbered update like 6.0 is, is like, oh, okay. <laughs> and the 5.0 was huge too. They changed yeah, a lot yeah. of things. So, yeah. But this is like, I, I don't know if it's official news, but um, for now, this is all there is into the 6.0 uh update so we'll see at least it's something yeah exactly um next next news uh pre-order these games before amazon ditches its prime pre-order discount so basically i'm not sure about the united states i will uh, i'll talk about canada um Mm -hmm. when uh amazon prime um when i got in it was because of the 20 percent uh pre-order um, they they ditched it for ten percent uh, like a couple months ago, and now they just cancel everything like pre-order related. Uh, United States, you always add like twenty percent off, right? Yeah, we have twenty percent off with like a ten dollar credit, but I've never used what? Amazon the pre-order, so okay. I this guess I'm huge, missing. Huh? I was missing out. I know. So on a sixty dollars game, uh, it was twenty percent off with a ten credit. On select games, ten dollar credit on select games. So you can basically have like a, a game for forty bucks, something like that. Yeah, pretty this much. Is, man, this is crazy. This is crazy to me <laughs> because video games in Canada are really, really expensive. So, uh, like, the only option right now is to buy digitally, I guess, because um, you, you save the taxes in Canada. So mm-hmm. I'd say like basically twelve bucks each time you buy digitally. But I really like to have the disc, so I'm kind of bummed about this news. Yeah, I like having discs too, like especially because I, my old account on PlayStation got hacked and I lost all the games I downloaded. That and sucks. luckily, that was that was during the PS3, so I didn't have too much downloaded. But there were a lot of PlayStation Plus games I was waiting to play that I didn't get to. But I'm I, I'm usually a disc man. Uh, l- lately, I've been going a little bit more digital, but I, I always try to find discs if I can. Yeah, the same thing here. Uh, I'm a huge collector. At least I was a huge collector. Uh, now there's not much games that come out uh, on disc, so um, yep. I'm but um, like for uh, Super Smash or games like that, I like to have um, the games on disc on cartridge in this case. But uh, mm-hmm. Spider Man, I will buy the disc. Uh, Spiral, I'll buy the disc. So I don't like to have like huge AAA games uh, digitally. So yeah, that sucks for me, man. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Sekiro Shadow Die Twice from uh, from from software. The developer and the publisher is Activision. Uh, there was like a, ba a huge backlash um, this week because uh, some users spotted um, some in-game purchases optional on the PlayStation Store. Uh, later that day, uh, Activision came out uh, publicly and said that there was no purchase in-game purchases. Um, so. I'm not sure. This is not the type of game that uh, you have to buy something else like cosmetic or something like that. This is more like um, like Dark Souls game, right, but with yeah. a Japanese setting, something like that. So I was mm -hmm. bummed to see that um, there was in in game purchases, but uh, it, it, the Activision basically said that the PS Store page was incorrect. So this is a weird situation right there. Yeah, it is kind of weird. It's almost like they mentioned it, like there might be to someone high in PlayStation, so they put it on there, and then they had to kind of backpedal and be like, "Oh, no, never mind, never mind." <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, like, what would you buy in like a Dark Souls game? Like the best weapon in the game, getting in a loot box, like that just defeats the whole purpose of the RPG element, you know? Yeah, exactly, and that will broke the game too. But I'm not not even sure if they will be online. Probably right. Um, it. I mean, it, it depends. I mean, Activision might put in multiplayer because pretty much all the other from software games do, but you never know. So maybe loot boxes, like you said, or something like that. Maybe that was the plan because Activision is really huge on uh, in-app, uh, not in-app, but in-game purchases. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. This is not the type of game that uh, you'll have optional purchases. Maybe like teams or uh, avatars or something like that, which is totally okay. But in game, that that's a no go for me. Mm -hmm. So um, like a lot of users cancel their pre orders and stuff like that. This is a little extreme right there, but yeah, I know it's know. a little extreme. It's like they even back they even said no, they were PlayStation is wrong, but people are still taking their pre orders away. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take a pre order away until I get confirmed evidence, you know. Yeah, exactly, and that n nobody said that there was. It's just like an error, probably. Maybe not. Maybe they just yeah. uh, backtrack. <laughs> but who knows, right? Yeah, who knows? Uh, time splitters. Are you a fan of time splitters? I love time splitters too. Dude, me too. Um, time splitter creator wants a new game, but is worried about it. So basically. Um, is worried about the sales of the game. I I know Time Splitter is an old game, so they will need to um, do something special about it. There's a lot of first-person shooter too. Uh, what I like about Time Splitter is it was it was different for its time. Uh, it was funny. Uh, it was a perfect shooter too. Now there's Call of Duty, which is uh, probably the most regarded perfect controls in a first-person shooter. Uh, Time Splitter was something special for me. Uh, there was a lot of like multiplayer and uh, challenges and a lot of monkeys too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love Time Splitter, but um, the the developer David Doak uh, would rather see Second Sight revived than Time Splitters. Mm. I don't well, know about that. Yeah, it's an horror game. Um, obscure. You know, speaking of like horror, like the one level in um, Time Splitters two. That completely freaked me out was that the cathedral level with the zombies and stuff like that. Yeah, playing that on, playing that on the hardest difficulties, there was a lot of like jump scares and guys who were they seem dead and they get up behind you. That, I mean, maybe a horror game, maybe a horror game them from them would be actually pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the game I remember the most was uh, the third one, Future Perfect, probably the best in the series. Uh, there was a lot of difficult challenges. Uh, I remember giving up on the games. Uh, on the game because it was too difficult. Um, yep, but uh, I would love to see a, a fourth one. That's for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know if um, this generation uh, would would want it. You know. Yeah, exactly. And uh, talking about uh, old games, Streets of Rage Four was announced today. Uh, huge fan of the Streets of Rage, the original series. Uh, it's been. 25 years lying dormant, which is a long wow. time. Uh, yeah. This genre is probably dead right now. Uh, <laughs> the the brawler type of game. There's a couple of new games that are brawlers, but uh, not good ones, you know. So mm -hmm. you played Streets of Rage, probably right in the arcade or. Yeah, I've played it an arcade version. I never played it on like a console or anything like that. 
So there's screenshots of the games. Uh, it seems like cell shaded, but uh, still feel like the original games. So I'm kind of I'm optimistic about the game. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Probably not an expensive game, so no big deal, right? Yeah, I wouldn't think it would be expensive. Uh, the next news, it's Cyberpunk 2077, uh, a demo of 48 minutes. You probably watched this, right? Yeah, I, I watched pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> Dude, that, that's some epic shit right there. Sorry for the language. This is absolutely crazy, man. CD Projekt Red is a um, quality developer, probably one of the best uh, for open world game. Uh, yep, no, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, if it's anything like the Witcher series, uh, we're definitely in for a, a treat with uh, just the aesthetics, the look, the feel, the world. And it's sci-fi too, which um, it's special, right? There's not a lot of games like that, like sci-fi, pure sci-fi. Sci -fi. Um, yep, it sounds cool. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, the gameplay sounds cool too. Everything like the, it's all the right notes for me. Mm -hmm. um, yep, I'm excited. And I, what I like about CD Projekt Red is that uh, they take their time with their franchise and with their game a little bit like um, the developer of um, the Grand Theft Auto uh, series, which I uh, have rank right now. Rockstar? Yeah, exactly. They take their time with their franchise and uh, it shows a lot of love in there. Yeah, they definitely don't push games out. You know, they, they take their time. They detail every section. You know, it's 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 they do they do good work. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's it's a quality developer, like I said. I'm super excited about this one, and it's out on uh, this year, right? Is that uh, I think ne I think it's late next year, late 2019. Oh, okay, okay. I'm mixing up some things there. Um, on Onimusha Warlords uh, comes to PS4 with enhanced graphics and feature in 2019. So I'm a huge fan of the original Onimusha. I have all the original games uh, on the PS2. Uh, the first one is rough though, so I'm surprised they go with this one. Um, it's like, um, I would say like a arcade game, a little bit like Resident Evil, but it's not horror, it's in a Japanese setting. Um, not sure if that Onimusha is not a well-known name uh, inside the video, video games, so I'm not sure if that will be a great uh, remaster. We'll see about it. Uh, do you know anything about Onimusha? Uh, this is the first time I've I've been uh, I've seen it. You know? Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> There's like um, five titles I think on the PS2. Um, yep, uh, I think you will like it a little bit, like Shenmue 2. Um, but it's more like arcadey, fast gameplay. So, uh, and the price point is uh, 19.99, which is a great price for this game. It will come out in 2019. Uh, so, yeah, classic Capcom. Capcom is have a really great year this year. Uh, they're they are bringing old franchise and uh, also new games, which are um, new great games too. So, great year for Capcom. Mm, yeah. The drop, Yemi. The drop. The drop. It's your segment, dude. It is my segment. So this week had a lot of releases. Uh, I kind of had to sift through them and kind of pull out the ones that uh, I knew we wouldn't want to talk about or no one would want to hear about. <laughs> but I think I got the list nice and short here. Um, so we'll begin with a game called Bad North. And this is a brutal real-time roguelite. Uh, kind of game. It's top down. You defend your island or your king island kingdom against Viking invaders, and there's unique islands for with with unique battle scenarios. And I think this is kind of a cool game. Maybe more so, it'd be more probably a little bit better on the Vita, to be honest with you. But um, there's a Vita port too. I believe there's a Vita port. Yes. Oh, that's great. Uh, but that's this great. game looks fun. It, it looks like a cute little game. I don't know if I'd buy it right now. Obviously, I'd probably wait for a sale, but um, I, th I think it, it looks like a nice little strategy game. Um, yep, I, I'm not into strategy game, uh, especially real-time ta tactics. Uh, Roguelite is pretty cool when it's well done. I'm not into uh, strategy games, but uh, it seems cool. I agree. 
Next on the list is a game called Bow to Blood. And this is a VR game, and you pilot airships and destroy enemy airships in this gladiatorial kind of sci-fi action uh, action game. And you pretty much, you can go PvP or PvAI, uh, and you just go against other players, you do challenges, and the overseers, quote-unquote, test your abilities in your in your ship. So this kind of looks like a cool game. I think uh, if you have, an, uh, if you're easily prone to uh, motion sickness, might not be the game for you. But it definitely looks like a cool concept, and it would definitely be something that I would pick up if 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 I could. <laughs> uh, it's a exclusively to VR, right? Yes, exclusively VR. All right, all right. Next up on the list is oh, what do you know? It's Donut County. Oh, you know about this one. It's a puzzles physics game, kind of, <laughs> where you play as a, a, a hole in the ground. It's kind of like Katamari. <laughs> um, yeah, except, exactly. Except you play as a hole that's getting bigger instead of, you know, you're rolling things together in a ball. Um, the game was cute, I would say. It's kind of funny at times, but it's also just kind of boring, to be honest with you. Uh, I live streamed the whole thing, and uh, I had, uh, I mean, I had times where I was having fun, but for the most part, it's just like, Okay, it's just the same thing each time. There's really no puzzle aspect until the end. <laughs> but, you know, it was it was a fun game. I think I'd wait once again uh, for a sale on this one because it is mm, fifth. Actually, it's 13 snackaroonies. Oh, so that's kind of expensive for that type of game. Uh, I watched your live stream, at, at least parts of it. Uh, so you finished the game, right? Yeah, I finished the game. It looks uh, slow. It looks boring. Uh, mm -hmm. Music was kind of cool too, though if I remember correctly, uh, music was pretty good. But uh, yep, it's uh, a weird game for sure. Yeah, it's definitely odd. But the cool thing about it is it was completely crowdfunded uh, and and developed by an indie developer through uh, people's donations. So I guess that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Probably a Kickstarter project, something like that. Yeah. That's cool. That's a cool way to uh, develop a game, that's for sure. But, um, yep. All right. Next is another VR game called Firewall Zero Hour. And in this game, you play as a team with, uh, I believe it's up to four players, and you do contracts. Uh, there's 12 different characters you can choose from. You work as a team, and you either have to protect or obtain valuable data from various locations around the globe. And I think this is kind of a cool like VR game, like we haven't really seen anything like this really on the VR yet, where you have like this four player team that's working together in a VR setting, going around corners, doing call outs. Of course, I'm sure the game won't work as perfectly as the trailers, but yeah, I think it's a cool case, concept. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yep, it's um, it's cool to have PSVR uh, exclusive game like that, that you work as a team, like you said. Um, there's not much games like this for the PlayStation VR, so that's cool. Yeah. Next up is Gate of Doom. Oh, and you this choose like... this one. You choose oh, this yeah. one. Look at the, the, the picture, too. It's like a low-res picture of... Uh, I don't even know what it is exactly. That's a guy with a little harp and a lady with a little staff. But this is actually <laughs> a classic multiplayer RPG game for one or two players, and it was originally released in the 1990s. And it was a classic arcade title. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. It, it kind of plays like um, your old... Uh, uh, what's that dungeon crawler called? Um, uh, sorry, the, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, a dungeon crawler. Let's just say that. I can't remember the exact okay. name of the... Uh, it's like a top-down view or...? Uh, it's kind of like... Um, it's like at an angle a little bit. It's not top-down exactly. Okay. Um but you, you do kind of it's it's the same kind of fighting style as like a, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game from the old days where you play you have one of four players you can choose characters you can choose from and then you duke it out on screen with with enemies on the screen. Now, it's not getting the best reviews, so I wouldn't suggest to go out and buy it right away, but if you're interested in all these in the old arcade games, it's definitely one to look at. Yeah, it's probably for the old fan of the of the game. I've never heard about this game before, but uh old 90s um there's a niche for that, so Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Next up, we have Pato Box, which is kind of like Punch Out. Uh, you play as a duck man, <laughs> and you go through this adventure fighting game, and you you try and win the championship here. Oh, that's um, cool. That's cool. 
yeah, it's it's kind of weird to be a duck because all the other characters in the game seem like humans, <laughs> but it has various fights and mini games to play, and it looks kind of fun. Um, it is on sale right now. It's five percent off with PlayStation Plus. So five percent. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> that's a big one. It's got kind of like this black and white uh, graphic style to it, which kind of makes it look unique. Um, and it definitely looks like a game that could could be fun if you like the old Punch Out games. Yep, exactly. All right, next on the list, ooh, we got Strange Brigade, uh, and this is a new IP by Rebellion. Uh, you fight through monsters as one of four characters. You explore ruins, you solve puzzles, and you get the treasure. It plays kind of like a Sniper Elite game, except it's a little bit more refined and a little bit more arcade, I would say. Okay. I definitely am enjoying this game more than their Sniper Elite series, and it has like this 20s vibe to it, with the voice acting and the narrator and stuff like that, it has a lot of funny jokes in it so far. I've gotten through about the first level, and it's I, I've fallen in love with it uh, pretty much right away. I can see that it might, if all the levels are kind of like this, where you you go through, you're just finding treasure, you're shooting enemies, it might get a little monotonous. But I think playing with multiple people is, is going to be a great experience. And even playing single player, I'm having a really fun time with it. So Stranger Brigade gets a thumbs up for me. Um, so it's not a multiplayer game, right? Yes, it's one to four player. Okay, and there's no story in there? Yes, there is a story. Okay, so it's uh, not only online, right? No, no, you can play solo if you want. I was playing solo the other day. It's uh, a it co-op was... elements in there. Mm-hmm, Okay, yeah. so that, that and... would be a great game to play together then. Yeah, I have it on computer. Uh, oh, okay. And you say you say that on the PlayStation podcast? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, there's a, a strange sense of humor in there. I, I saw I saw the trailer. I was uh, I was charmed by the trailers. I got pretty good reviews too, and all the major sides reviewed this game. So it's a pretty high uh, on my list game for uh, 2018. Yeah, and Yummy gave it a thumbs up, so you know it's good. Oh, a thumbs up from <laughs> Yummy. Next up on the list, we have an early access game called Switchblade, which is kind of like Rocket League, except you have weapons on your on your little RC car. Well, not RC car, but little R, little tank thing. Yeah. Uh, and you try and take down the opponent's towers. So it's a 5v5 battle arena. It is multiplayer only, uh, and it has heavily armored high-tech vehicles. So I guess they're not like a little RC thing. They're, they're vehicles. That's, that, um, that looks fun, man. That looks it does like look pure fun. fun. A little bit like Rocket League. Uh, it's not right. a sport game, but uh, I have the same vibe as Rocket League. Yeah, and just just so everyone knows, it is early access. Um, so expect updates and more content, probably free content. Yep, exactly. And hey, that's the end of the drop. We reached the bottom. So you skip Yakuza? You skip for I'm... all the fans of Yakuza? Yakuza Aren't we talk, Ki- Ki- we're Yami talking about that in the uh, the trophy section, though. Oh, that's why. That's a good point, though. That's a good point. All right, we'll talk about it later then. I'm on top of it. <laughs> I believe in you, man. Um, so the topic of the show, my friends, uh, is Gamescom 2018. Uh, it's of- officially finished. Uh, we have a lot of news to cover. Um, so the first one, and we'll talk exclusively about uh, games that come out on PlayStation, that have a chance to come out on PlayStation or are coming out to PlayStation. So Mm -hmm. we might skip a little bit of uh, like the Nintendo stuff and stuff like that. But you you can come to the Discord to talk about us, to talk about it uh, with us uh, if you want. Uh, The link is in the description below. Uh, First one is Cyberpunk. Uh, They talk a lot about uh, Cyberpunk uh, 2077. Uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier, so I'll skip this section, but there's new screenshot concept art. Uh, games look awesome. Yeah, all um, fantastic. Yep, exactly. Uh, super unique look, too. Uh, super match, m- mature. So uh, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Mass Effect, as you know, and this game looks like a larger scale Mass Effect. Maybe you're only on one planet, but, I mean, the map is going to be... I mean, it's got to be huge for all the... The freaking content they're gonna have. Yep, exactly. I always like those games where you can choose, you know, what you want to be. You know, you, you it's, you're not tied into being this one singular character. You can be male, female. You can be gay. You can be straight. You can be a, a heavy hitter or a, a sneaky person. 
it, it I love those kinds of games because it gives you so much variety in your multiple playthroughs, which is why I play through Mass Effect so much because there's just always variety in it. And there's a lot of dialogues, a little bit like Horizon, like you can choose a little bit how the stories play. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a little bit like The Witcher too. So uh, there's a lot of influences there, but uh, yep, it's CD Projekt Red. So expect a huge, huge, huge game and a polished game too. Right. Uh, next up is Resident Evil 2. Uh, this shows our first screenshot and the gameplay of Claire Redfield, which the fans are probably uh, going crazy right now. Uh, it looks great. Um, I know, it looks insane. It looks really, really good. Um, I hope they will not fuck it up though. I hope that the <laughs> gameplay uh, will be great. But um, yep, it looks insane, man. Yeah, they, I mean, these screenshots, they look beautiful. Like the explosion in the one where she's shooting the grenade launcher just um, <laughs> looks <Yeah>. so good. <laughs> and the gameplay too, um, the, the eight minute gameplay uh, looks insane, uh, super polished. Uh, but the game is already like done, the story is done. So it's just a matter of doing it right and mm -hmm. correctly uh, for the fans. Um, yep, so uh, this one is on my list too, that's for sure. A lot of great games, man. <laughs> <laughs> like Sekiro is on my list too. Uh, they get a release date. The official release date is March 22nd uh, next year. Um, not sure. I, I, I have the same feeling as Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, it seems like similar games. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima is probably more story-related game. Uh, Sekiro is more like the gameplay and the Dark Souls aspect of it, uh, mm -hmm. difficulty and stuff like that. But uh, both Japanese settings, uh, both huge developer too. So uh, yeah, this one, this one too, man. It's on my list. And yeah, it's a collector's edition too, which is beautiful. Right. Yeah, it does look cool. Um, as for. I, I'm not because I'm torn. I'm not sure if I should get both games, if I should just get one game, if I should get the other game. Um, I probably will end up getting both of the games. But you're right; they do have like the same same kind of like aesthetic to them. They just have completely different gameplay to them. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's only in the same time period, but uh, at least the same settings. But it's completely two different games in terms of gameplay. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, gets a new trailer, of course. Oh uh, yeah. Games uh, come out pretty soon. So mm -hmm. um it seems more of the same to be honest. Yeah, uh it definitely looks like it's a lot of the same concepts as the first two games. Um there's probably going to be a few extra things added in there though just to spice things up a bit. And I'm surprised the last two Tomb Raider games have not come out on both play well I guess they came out on computer but PlayStation was always like a year later and it's usually a complete edition that comes out on PlayStation. This year they're releasing it on all all systems I think except for Switch of course. Um, which is, which is fantastic because I get to play it sooner. <laughs> I love the last two uh, Tomb Raider games; they're they're amazing. Yep, exactly. And I think uh, Crystal Dynamics uh, learned their lessons to uh, try to uh, get their uh, the Rise of the Tomb Raider only on Xbox One first. Uh, it came out. It came back to bite them in the ass. I think. Um, yeah, a bit. After that, the 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 game released uh, a complete edition on PS4, but uh, I think the the sales already <laughs> suffered from it. Uh, the deal was probably not the best for them. So, uh, yep, it's coming out on the same day on all consoles. So, yep, I'm excited, but uh, it's more of the same, honestly. Even the, the menus and stuff like that, uh, it looks the same. It but, looks similar, yeah. Yep, it looks uh, really similar. <clears throat> um, but, um, yep, the story is always great. The graphics are always great. So, always a great experience. I really do hope they expand on the open world setting from the last game because it was... It was still straightforward enough that you knew where you needed to go, but there were areas that had a little bit of exploration, and that's kind of what I like in a game. Kind of like Strange Brigade. You have these areas that you go to, you fight enemies, you explore, and then you can there's a straight path to the next area. That's more of what I like in an open-world game, even though I do enjoy being able to do whatever I want. It's just in those settings, I tend to not focus on the story path, <laughs> and I decide to, oh, this old lady needs flowers. Let me go grab the flowers real quickly, and there's like you know the main <laughs> quest going on. <laughs> yep, uh, exactly. Like uh, Assassin's Creed, I'm, I'm the same too. Right. I just forget about the story <laughs> and doing all the side mission before I'm moving on. Yep, that's the completionist in me. <laughs> Devil May Cry 5 uh, gets uh, a release date March 8 uh, next year. Uh, fans seem pleased, which is surprising with uh, the, re the, the trailer of uh, DMC5. 
I'm um, not a huge fan of Devil May Cry, so I cannot judge exactly the story, but uh, the gameplay looks super slick, super stylish. So, uh, yep, this one is uh, on my wait list uh, because I'm not a huge fan of the Devil May Cry, but uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, HD collections, so I might go back and actually play the game because uh, the story seems really interesting, actually. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I haven't really played. I played the uh, Devil May Cry like the reboot one i guess you call it the dmc um yeah uh but i think they released the first three or four games on um one disc i believe yep, uh, i for, think for so playstation yeah. 4 so if you, if you are looking for that uh it is out there if you want to go back and play yeah it. the old the devil may cry games are kind of tough to get back into though uh they are art games and um but only for the story i guess hmm. why not yeah why not uh, Life is Strange 2 gets the first official trailer. Uh, the game is out in like three weeks now. Four weeks? A month? Oh, jeez. Uh, I didn't know yeah, it was super that soon. soon. September, September uh, 27th, actually. Well, I uh, guess it's easier to put out their games because they do them episodically. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, it's only the first uh, the first episode, of course. Uh, I have the same feeling, the, the same feeling with the music, uh, the settings. Uh, this is Life is Strange so um yep i might i might wait for all the episodes to come out um otherwise i will probably live stream the game but uh yep it looks good yeah it looks like it definitely looks like a life is strange um I, I like i said i think in the last episode i don't know why they're calling it life is strange 2 i think it should have been another spin-off and life is strange 2 should have picked back up with max but like you said before you know there's there's too many variables for doing that so i get why they did it um, and it does look, I mean, the graphics look improved, the textures look improved, and definitely the sound design sounds uh, pretty similar to the first game, which I, en I enjoy. Yep, exactly. And uh, in the same vein, Twin Mirror, another game from the creators of Live is Strange, uh, 10 minutes of gameplay. What did you think of it? I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's hard to judge a game with by 10 minutes of gameplay, but it does it does look cool. Yep, I hope they are not like juggling with too much game at the same time. Yeah, um, it seems like a lot on on their plates. Um, I I hope it will not like um, delay the other episodes because we they have a lot of games. Um, yep. Yeah, it's, it's kind of psychedelic too. You know, you, you got those dream sequences and he's shirtless and it's like, oh, uh oh. <laughs> A little bit like tell Telltale's, uh, they're out yeah, juggling too much with too much project, and they're like um, all their games like were were four or five months apart. So, that and this sucks. game looks like it does have like a more realistic look to it. So it could possibly take some more of their time too, if if they're working on to really polish the game. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Spyro, <laughs> I show off more levels. Uh, it looks good, man. It looks yeah, really look good, actually. Uh, it's more screenshots, and uh, the, especially for the for the third game, uh, more screenshots and more uh, gameplay. Like the game is out really soon, so it's probably like done already. But it looks it looks great. It looks great. Yeah, I mean, anyone who was a fan of Spyro before, or anyone who is looking for a nice three D platformer game, I mean, this is gonna be the Coupe de la Gras. <laughs> oh. Oh, a French? <laughs> Talking French? I don't know. I don't think I said that right. <laughs> a, a coup, coup de grâce? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. Coup, coup de grâce. Yeah, that, that's actually not too bad. No, <laughs> that, that's not French, that's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metro Ex Exodus. Uh, new trailer, gameplay demo. I uh, never played any Metro games. I know there's uh, a lot of fans of this series, though. Um, it seems I, like... I love Metro games. Excuse me? I love the Metro games. They're amazing. Yep. So you can talk a little bit more about this if you want. Sure. I mean, Metro takes place after the bombs drop uh, on Russia. A nuclear war broke out between America and Russia, and you play as the Russian side of things, which is a completely different scenario than you're used to. Uh, it's actually based off of a book, um, and I actually read the book, and it's a pretty damn good book, too. It is a little weird with the translation, though. <laughs> I will say that. But oh, Metro so you're a Exodus, huge fan, actually. I'm a pretty big fan. I, I, I got into the lore. Um, Last Light was excellent. And if it's anything like this game, I mean, this game already looks fantastic. We've already had, a, I think we had another trailer before that, but this is a gameplay demo and it just looks 
it, it looks amazing. <laughs> like this is, yeah, it looks this good. Is like, I agree. It looks really, really sharp. It's like really number sharp. three on my most wanted games right now because it's just like, it's. I, I always love the Metro games, and I've loved doing the stealth in the game because it's really well done. And all the things you can do, like you have a sound, especially you shoot a light bulb. Now the guy can't see you, but he knows the light bulb. You know, it's very, it's very deep. It's a very deep game. And this one looks like just, it might be open world too. I think it's open world. So that could add more layers to the Metro franchise. And I'm really excited for it. I'm yeah, excited it to see good. where Archeum is going to go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it looks really great, actually. Um, yep. But I never played any Metro games, so I'm less excited than you. That's for sure. But uh, it looks really great. Yeah, uh, Kingdom the Metro games are always on sale. Like they're always for like five bucks on PlayStation Store. Yeah, they're so I'd, super cheap. I recommend picking those up. They're they're really fantastic. And they remade uh, all the games too. Yeah, they're all yes. Redux. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Kingdom Hearts three, uh, Toy Story level, uh, D mode. Huge fan of the Toy Story uh, movies. So I'm kind of excited about this one. Like I said in the last episode, Kingdom Hearts. Only played the first one. I uh, was not a huge fan of the gameplay. I I appreciate what they are trying to do, uh, but with all the Toy Story, the the Frozen, the everything like Disney, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and I'm more and more excited the more I hear about this game. Yeah, I've never really played the Kingdom Hearts games, but I can I can see why people are really excited because that's that's a lot of new stuff being added into. Uh, uh, the Kingdom Hearts games because I, I know where they came from. Uh, you know, it's not like I haven't, I've ignored them, you know. Um, yep, exactly. I agree with you. Uh, there's a lot of news, man. Uh, Gamescom is really huge this year, actually. Yeah. Um, E3 was kind of lackluster this year, but Gamescom is bringing the big guns, man. A mm -hmm. uh, new Darksiders 3 trailer, gameplay in the boss fight. Uh, Darksiders. Okay. Okay. But there's a I lot enjoyed... of. Excuse me? I, I enjoyed the other Darksiders games. Yeah. They're, they're just kind of like mindless beat em up type games. Uh, but the second one did introduce more puzzle aspects. So I'm, I'm guessing they're going to add more puzzles into this game, probably. Uh, new open world. Uh, the boss fight looked fantastic. And the new character, I mean, I'm not all on board with the new character, but I think she's going to be a badass. So, you know, that, that's all I want is a badass demon killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dark Darksiders for me always overshadowed by God of War, uh, both similar games, uh, right? In terms of gameplay, at least. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yep, I never played any Darksiders. I I tried the first one. I think uh, it was rough, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was not polished. Um, but the third one looks good. Uh, just not on my list for now. Maybe a try a, a prize drop or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and you know they already released the second one free for PlayStation Plus, uh, the remastered version. Yeah, yeah. So this one, even yeah. if you could probably wait a while on Dark Side of Three, it'll probably be free eventually. Yeah, that that's a, a great game to be free soon. Mm -hmm. um, Shenmue Three uh, for all the Shenmue fan out there, uh, get a release date August twenty seventh next year. Mm -hmm. um, the collection just dropped Shenmue One and Two HD, uh, so you can. You can get back to into the series before the third one. Uh, yep, that was a good idea about them. Yep, exactly. A uh, lot of mixed reviews about the collection. Old games uh, didn't age really well in terms of gameplay, but uh, Shenmue is like uh, a monument for a lot of people out there. So, mm -hmm. yep. There's Ace Combat Seven too, which uh, is long dormant now. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't even remember Ace Combat. It's been so long. It's been so long, exactly. I think there's a one, there's one on the PlayStation Three, but I'm not a huge fan of the, those types of games. So, but the mm -hmm. next one, yeah, me, I'm excited about this one. I'm a huge fan of the Dragon Warrior series and uh, the Dragon Quest series now. Dragon Quest Eleven. I saw a lot of uh, early gameplay demo of uh, YouTubers uh, I follow, like Colin Moriarty. Um, I'm all in for this one, man. It looks so great. It looks like a, a traditional GRPGs turn base with uh, action in there. Uh, like there's a turn base, but uh, it's like an action turn base. Basically, you can move uh, in the map, but you can freeze time. Um, and it's uh, Dragon Quest stories, so it's it's tradi traditional. Uh, a JRPG, and I really, really, really excited about this one. Yeah, it sounds cool. 
This is all you'll say about Dragon Quest? I am not as cool. I'm not a big fan of Dragon Quest, to be oh. honest with you. Okay. But, um, no big deal. No big deal. I mean, it sounds cool. You know, I, I could probably get into it, but I just, I've never played a Dragon Quest game. Yeah, they are, they are, it, this is a great series, Dragon Quest. Uh, there are eight installments, probably one of the best. Uh, probably a lot of fans will agree with me too. Um, on the, the, the PlayStation 2. It, it's more of the same, but it's been a long time since we have a, dra- a traditional Dragon Quest, so. This one is on my eye on my list. Trials Rising, which is the next step for the Trials Fusion, the Trials series. Um, a nine minutes of new gameplay footage. Uh, looks hardcore. Uh, Ubisoft uh, did a great job with the first one, the Trials Fusion. So uh, notoriously difficult trial series, exactly. So I'm not a huge fan of Trials either. I played the PlayStation Plus free game, which was Fusion. I just I couldn't get into it. I, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, it's not for everyone. It's really hardcore, and it's it's there's not a lot of depth in there too. It's always the same. But um, yep, for the trials, a fan out there. Soul Calibur Six, uh, gameplay demo. Uh, Soul Calibur. I, I I was kind of surprised that they revived this franchise. Um, it's not long dormant by any means. Uh, the fifth one was on PlayStation Three. But it's been a long time since uh, the last Soul Calibur. I'm not sure about the sales uh, that will bring to the Soul Calibur series. Um, there's a lot of competition in there. So the last Soul Calibur game that I really, really enjoyed was Soul Calibur Three. So I'm excited to see what they can do with this new generation of of, of graphics and combat and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, Valkyria Chronicle- Chronicles Four. Um, I played the first one, really, really, really weird gameplay, um, <laughs> really unique gameplay too, uh, unique graphic, a unique game all in all. Um, so we'll see how it goes with Valkyria Chron- Chronicles 4. Um, you played this one or probably not, right? Yeah, not me. Yep. So the, the first one was, was on <coughs> PS3. After that, the sales like suffered. It's from Sega, if I remember correctly. After that, they tried to bring it on PSP, and the third one, like it's really like the 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 timeline of the 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 releases of this game is all fucked up. Yeah, it um, sounds goofy. Yeah, it's it's really goofy. Uh, it's not for everyone. Not sure where they're going with that. Um, it will probably bomb. Honestly, it's not for everyone. Yeah, we'll see. New Lego DC Super Villains. Woo! Yep. I knew I would you, you would like that, man. Uh, it looks looks more of the same, but looks really cool once again with the DC the... characters: Lex Luthor, Solomon Grundy, uh, right, Cheetah. Yeah. Yep, looks oh, cool. Oh my gosh! Like all the Batman, I'm a hardcore Batman fan and DC fan in general. I don't like the movies, the the real the action, like the the real movies, but the animated movies are great and the comic books are awesome. And all the Lego games, I really, really enjoy. Lego Batman 3 got some bad reviews, but I love that game. There was so much to it. There were so many characters. And this looks like it's going to be just a jumble of all my favorite D-list Lego DC supervillains. And I'm going to be so excited to play as all of them. Yep. Uh, yep. I'm always... Uh, I, I, I skip Lego The Incredibles. I, there's too much Lego games in there. I cannot keep up. But I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Lego series, so I'm always excited, but I'll wait for a price drop for sure. Yeah, but, definitely. Yep. I always buy my Lego games at like five bucks, something like that. So <laughs> I'm cheap, man. Uh, the Surge 2 uh, looks looks cool. Uh, they show off a new gameplay. Um, we'll probably get buried between all the other games, like sci-fi games, like Cyberpunk and stuff like that. And this is a Soul Likes game. So uh, Sekiro will probably like eat this game alive, but it looks cool. There's just a lot of games like that right now. Yeah, I think it's going to have the same problem as the first one. It's not going to be something unique enough or or well made enough to keep my attention. Uh, the first one I, I got through the first like two bosses, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is how I feel about this game. All right. Uh, Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight. You surprised that I put it in there? I'm not surprised. No? Okay. Persona 5 always have a, a great soundtrack. Uh, this is not the, like, 
this is a rhythm game more than a dancing game. Um, there's a lot of Persona five, uh, the Persona series spin-off like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Always have good reviews, uh, cool art style, and con- cool music. So, I know you're a huge fan of their written based gameplay games like Guitar Hero and stuff like that. So, <laughs> this one's for me. you, man. Art it might too. be. It's art core. Might, this this might be my first personal game. <laughs> yeah, you should start with another one, honestly. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you wish, man. And the last one that I that, that I picked up from the list is Rage Two. Hell yes. Yeah, I, I, I know you're a huge fan of the first Rage 1, uh, the, the first Rage game. Uh, Rage 1 was uh, probably overshadowed by a lot of other games in the same mm-hmm. genre. Uh, it yeah. was a cool game, uh, got cool good reviews too. Um, the sales probably were, wasn't good enough to make a, a second one. And I was surprised with uh, the announcement of the, the second game. Me too. Yep. So, um, Avalanche Rage One is a developer. Oh, yeah, so. Rage One is like such a underrated game. Like I'm a full supporter of the first game. I played through it a lot of times, uh, and I am ready for Rage Two. It looks like a better version of the first game. And people wonder why are they making Rage Two? No one remembers that game. It's for people like me, who knew that the game was good. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and there's probably a lot more fans of the Rage series uh, that they don't actually like uh, know that they missed this series, so yeah. uh, they missed the first game. So uh, yeah, it, it, I think it came out as the same time as uh, like Borderlands and stuff like that, and Borderlands was yeah, so yeah. huge that uh, they, they eat the game alive. So yep, so that's pretty much like the biggest news of Gamescom 2018. A lot of cool announcement. I'm excited about the future, and I'm excited about the future of Gamescom too. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty big show. I think that the announcements there were were bigger this year's than E3. So really Definitely. cool event, man. Yeah. Okay, so trophies section, Yemi. Uh, I picked one. You picked two. Uh, the mm-hmm. first one, uh, not a lot of trophies came out uh, last la- last week. Uh, the first one I took is Yakuza Kiyami 2. Uh, one gold, seven silvers, and 50 bronzes. So a lot of trophies in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, people already have this game. Um, it's already out now. Yep, it was out yesterday. So um, it seems like there's a lot of playthroughs. Uh, they complete the game in Legion mode. I'm not sure what that means, but it's clearly a second playthrough. And there's collectibles in there. There's win all Coliseum tournaments, learn all battle skills. Not sure about the missables, but I think this is a long platinum. Yeah, look, I mean, getting over 10 million yen, any game where you have to get a specific amount of money is going to be a grind. Yeah. Guaranteed. There's always a couple tricks, right? But um... <laughs> not for some games. Damn you, Orcs Must Die Unchained. Oh, Oh, I don't know this one. But I know the name, but I don't know about the trophy list. Oh, yeah, there's a Grindy? trophy for getting, like, 100 million gold. And it's just, like, it's the, yeah, it's the biggest grind you'll ever do. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you'll be um, quite disappointed about Donut County because mm-hmm. it seems like an easy platinum and you bought it on Steam, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 40% yeah. of a clear rate of the, the platinum. So uh, easy platinum, man. Yeah, all the trophies in it are pretty straightforward. Like, there's only maybe one or two you'd have to go back and redo, like lose against the boss, or maybe you forgot to destroy a TV that you needed to destroy. But I think I got most of the Steam achievements in one go, so it's not it's not terribly difficult. And I think it's kind of like a it's almost like a trophy horror game almost. Yeah, exactly. It seems like a lot of specific events inside the levels and stuff like that. So you just play casually, I guess, and after that you go back into each levels and clear the, the trophy list. Yeah. The next one is Strange Brigade. Um, yeah. Already six pe- per, uh, six uh, person, six players have the platinum. Uh, That's again, insane. Yep. Um, not sure about this one. You play this one, so you're probably more familiar with the trophies. Yeah, uh, of course I have it on Steam again, but uh, the trophies seem... Uh, pretty straightforward for the most part. I don't. I don't think there's anything in here that would make you scratch your head and go, "Hmm, how do I do that?" I think the only thing you might have trouble with, like, is just some of the more grindy ones. 
Um, I believe there's one for like collecting 10,000 gold and flattening 100 enemies with melee attacks and just killing enemies in general. It has a lot of collectibles in the game, but to be honest with you, it doesn't look like anything that's going to make you scream and throw your controller out a window. So there's no like missable, right? You can go back into each chapters. Yeah, see, there's a chapter select. Um, oh, that's and great. That's great. I love, I love you, games that have that. You will need someone to play with, though, because you need to rescue your teammates from things. But okay. um, I think I think, uh, I think it'll be easy just to get someone to come with you. And is there any couch co-op in there? Split screen um, or it's only online? It might be only online. Uh, I'm not sure, though. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Okay, and there's a banish, amit, and defeat uh, Seteki without delivering the coup de grâce. We're talking hey, about coup de grâce, yeah. Yeah, that's meta. That's crazy. I didn't <laughs> even know that was in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we are uh, now at the uh, listeners uh, segment. Uh, we gather a couple of questions from um, the listeners from the Discord server. Once again, the link is in the description below. Um, so you have three choice. Yemi, mm -hmm. are you ready? I am ready. Um, Sony and Risk. That, that that doesn't make sense to you, right? Should Sony I'm... that took more risk? That that's a better way to put it. Okay. Uh, remake of a PS One game. And let's go with uh, crossplay. Ooh, I kind of want to talk about um, remakes of a PS One game. Uh, that that I that that was my pick too, man. So oh good. So the question comes from uh, Diego from the Discord server. Everybody knows uh, Diego if you are in the Discord server. If you could make a remake from any PS1 game, which one would you do? And I haven't thought about it before, so I'll, I'll let you answer first. I'll think about it. Uh, so the game that I would choose, and people are probably going to scratch their heads, of course. Because like your Scooby-Doo uh, game hey. in the last podcast? <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, there's a lot of games from the PS1 that I want to remaster that they already got coming, like, you know, uh, uh, Spyro and Crash and stuff like that. But yeah. I really would like to see a remake of either Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, 2, or even one of the Mortal Kombat games, Mortal Kombat 2 or something like that. I Because I, I really enjoyed those games on the PlayStation 1, and I would love to play them in a, in a remastered setting, you know? Yeah, uh, the, the, the old Mortal Kombat games were like, there was arcade stuff in there too like a story mode and stuff like that right mm -hmm. yeah yeah weird games weird games and uh <laughs> tony Ox pro skater one already have uh, a remake on the ps3 i think oh does it yep tony Ox pro skater hd it's called i played oh, I it never, platinum never it. it um but there's a lot of issues with the music like the classic soundtracks are not there because of, uh, because of the copyrights oh yeah uh, the gameplay is pretty tight like the first game and uh missing a couple of stages classic stages in there so all in all like not a bad like remaster or anything but tony ox is all about the music for me so i was kind of bummed about this one i would love to see crash team racing too um i think that's that yeah, might that's be next a on the list game. for that might be next on the list for Activision after Spyro, you know? I, I think that's like a huge, hugely popular game back in the PlayStation days. So for me, uh, there's a lot of, you know how much I love uh, JRPGs, so um, mm -hmm. I will not pick one JRPGs. Um, you remember Toomba? Mm, the, 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 not ringing a bell right now. Yep. This one, uh, there's two on the PlayStation 1. Pretty rare games, uh, really expensive now. Uh, it was like uh, side scrolling with um, how can I, can I compare that game? It's like a side scrolling with depth effects in there, like you could go back into the, the backgrounds and stuff like that. Really, really cool platformers. Not a lot of people know about this series. Uh, that would be a great game to remaster. Of course, I could pick like Xeno Gears, Final Fantasy VII, which will be remade, but not correctly, in my opinion. Uh, they were going more with the, the action side instead of the turn-based RPG, which I understand the decision, but it's not Final Fantasy if there's no turn-based like, combat in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Valkyrie Profile, uh, Dino Crisis was a good one too. Uh, the, the old Silent Hill would be a really, really great pick too. So a lot of cool PS1 games that haven't aged well, but would be cool to remaster exactly like the Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. So... Uh, a lot of cool games in there. Pepsi Man. What? Pepsi Man. 
with the Pepsi Man. You never played Pepsi Man? No, I, I know about Pepsi Man, but nobody <laughs> wants a remake of that. <laughs> it was like a promotional game, right? Yeah, was, I had a lot of fun with it, to be honest with you. I thought it was it was fan, it was really funny. <laughs> he plays like this guy dressed in the skin tight blue and white, you know, logo type Pepsi <laughs> outfit. It's just that I thought goofy, it was the funniest right? thing. I thought it was hilarious. Now, would I want a remaster? N probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants a remaster of Pepsi, man. Uh, so uh, I let you choose for the next segment the PlayStation game from the past. Uh, so your selection was and is is it is Call of Duty World at War Final Fronts. Okay. I, I don't know about this game. game. I don't know anything about this game, and I oh. haven't checked it out because you. I knew you would explain <laughs> it to me. So go ahead. I'll I'll tell you about this game. <laughs> So for the last two episodes, we've talked about games that are good. And I was like, okay, PlayStation exclusive game, PlayStation 2, one of the last ones that came out for PlayStation 2, and it's the only Call of Duty game that is solely, that was a release for consoles that is solely on one console and one console only as the PlayStation 2. Uh, and Final Fronts came out the same day as Call of Duty World at War. Uh, and if you don't know what that game is, it is the it is the version of World at War. You know, Final Fronts is like a game that they were like, oh, we need something on the older consoles. But you know what? F Xbox and F, you know, GameCube, we're just putting out Final Fronts on PlayStation for whatever reason. I don't know why they didn't say. I don't know. I don't know how it happened, but it did. Yeah, um, there's a lot of weird ports like between the between consoles generation. Uh, they're trying stuff to get cash on both consoles. So maybe this is a product of that. It didn't work, though. <laughs> no, it bombed. <laughs> it bombed. All right. Uh, funny thing is, well, maybe not funny, but the sad thing is this is the only Call of Duty game that was made specifically by Rebellion, which we just talked about and praised. Um, and they made one of the worst. Actually, it is the worst Call of Duty game that I've ever played. And I played them all. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Um, so why is this game so terrible? Why am I talking so badly about it? Well, if you look at this game... It was released at the end of the PlayStation 2's lifetime. We've already had Call of Duty Finest, uh, uh, Finest Hour. We've already had Call of Duty 2, Big Red 1, and the original. And we've already had Call of Duty 3 that incorporated the motion controls. And this game looks like an early PlayStation 1 game. The graphics are awful. The gameplay is slow and monotonous. The graphics just they, they just they look really bad for the time. And you can go back and look at, play, at Call of Duty 3, Call of Duty 2, the original Finest Hour game, those look extremely better. So I don't know what they were thinking with this game, right? And I, 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 I it, it boggles my mind. Yep. Um, like you were talking about Rebellion, there's a lot of like well-known developer right now that were doing a lot of shitty games uh, in their debut. Um, so maybe that's one of them. Like you said that this game was developed by Rebellion, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rebellion. <laughs> So, um, yep, everybody needs to start somewhere. So that just like that, that's their first game, probably. I don't know if it's their first one. I think they were licensed by uh, Activision to make this game because their first Sniper Elite game did so well. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, they, they probably didn't put their best foot forward. I mean, the game, the game freezes a lot. It freezes at checkpoints for like seconds that you go, oh, <laughs> shit, my game froze. Uh, nope. Lazy death animations in this game, especially when you're killing people with fire and, and flames and explosives. It just they just fall down in the normal fashion. Um, there's no animations for planning TNT for doing anything special in the game, like in Call of Duty Three. Uh, the MGs, the machine guns. Guess what? They don't overheat. You can fire that that thing forever. And trust me, I did it. <laughs> I tested this game to the core. And there is no overheating for MGs, even though that was a thing in Call of Duty 3. Um, the weirdest thing about this game is if you're using a bolt-action rifle or a shotgun, you are forced to say zoomed in on the gun when you are ro loading in the next bullet for your shot. And that can make the gameplay very tedious. It can make it very strange because you're forced to stay zoomed in and reload, you know, like your Car 98 yeah, or yeah. your shotgun. And it is just very, very strange. It really... It's really a strange. Yeah, and another thing it's about the... Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, it's probably Activision, like, saying to Rebellion, you have, like, 
six months to develop the game yeah. and yeah. <laughs> you do what you can and we release it and there's no patches on ps2 so uh, oh, the game is yeah. broken forever man um and the funny thing is the type 99 which is a, a sniper rifle there's a bayonet on the end um but instead of using the bayonet you use the butt end of the rifle which i found very strange <laughs> yeah this is weird <laughs> Uh, a lot of the dialogue, uh, they got some of the same voice actors from World of War, but the dialogue is like written by a six-year-old. Uh, and some of the deliveries just don't make sense sometimes. Like they'll just randomly say something, and that'll be the cutscene, and then the game will resume. It's very strange, like that. Yeah. So I totally shitty game, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty shit. I mean, <laughs> every Call of Duty has a tank level. Well, not every, but almost every Call of Duty has a tank level. And this one is the only Call of Duty tank level that is on rails. It's an on rails tank oh, level. Oh man, this is so bad. <laughs> and I was, I was crying. <laughs> I was like, this is. It was so boring too, because the whole thing was timed. So you could destroy the three tanks in front of you within seconds, and the tank will sit there and sit there for whatever time limit is set for that, and then it will move on. And you're like, oh my god! And you have to wait for the other tanks to move first. And oh, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> it sounds really bad. It sounds really bad. Now that you think, uh, now that uh, you talk about it, I think I saw some gameplay of it. Uh, it's a notoriously bad game. Yes. Um, if they ever were going to do a remaster on it, which I don't know why they would, I think that the level design was actually pretty good. Most levels were pretty, you know, they, they flowed pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like the AI was actually pretty good in this game. They actually could land shots. And I did feel like the game had an overall good story to it. Just the dialogue just just sucked. It yeah. sucked really bad. Sometimes it um, breaks the game, too. Yeah. That, yep. But yeah, I thought, you know, hey, we've talked about some good games. Well, let's talk about a bad game. And this is the lowest of the low you can get on the PlayStation 2 for for reals. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yep, the, the PlayStation from the past segment, I can talk about good games, great games, masterpiece, so we can talk about shitty games sometimes too. That's totally okay. So we'll, we'll uh, circle between my choice and your choice from now on. Um, sure. Just to bring more variety into the games. So, yep. So that's pretty much it, Yemi. Uh, thanks for joining me on this podcast. Hey, nice. Not a problem. It was great. I appreciate you, man. And uh, I'll talk to you uh, next week. Uh, remember that Chronocast is a PlayStation exclusive podcast. Uh, we record each and every Wednesday. And we drop the podcast on the YouTube channel on every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So thank you for listening. And once again, thanks, Diego, for uh, the question. I really appreciate you, man. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.